The sudden attack by Hamas on Saturday had not only brought numerous casualties on Israeli setting in Gaza, but it also led to similarly deadly retaliatory attacks by Israel forces. To get an update on the latest development in Gaza and the implications in Palestine, we will now talk with Agung Nurwi Joyo, MSc, lecturer at Department of International Relations at FISIP, University of Indonesia. Hello, good day, Pak Agung. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Pagung, we would like to understand more about this ongoing conflict, and we are very happy to have you here to shed more lights on this. So, Pagung, for as long as we can remember, there has always been tension on and off clashes between Palestine and Israel. The latest one, uh, the latest big one, took place back in 2021. Now, in relation to the latest clash that happened in Saturday, between Hamas and Israel military in Gaza. First question would be, need to ask you, why is this happening at this moment in time? I mean, we say this is an escalation of conflict. What did it escalate from? Okay, thank you. Um, I think um, this attack, yeah, this operation by the Gaza is such a response yeah, to the segregation of the Al-Quds yeah, um, and also Israel's review show uh, to exchange the prisoners and attacks on Palestinians as well as the expansion of the Israel uh, settlement violence. And also um, it, this, this operation also happened uh, during the anniversary of the Yom Kippur um, operation a um, few decades ago. And I think uh, this is something as we, we can see that this is such a uh, response as the resistance as uh, from the, how do I say, um, um, structural violence that did by the um, Israelis. I think that's the things. And also something that we, we, we cannot um, uh, forget that few days before this operation, there is an um, uh, um, provocation from the Israeli side yeah, uh, in, in the Al-Quds. And as we know that for Hamas, um, problems of Al-Quds is the red line. I think this... It, it is uh, the situation push the uh, Hamas to do and declare the operation of uh, Al Qaeda flood. Okay, Pagung, thank you for that context that you've given us. I think it's important to understand that this latest conflict did not come out of nowhere, right? Now, please yeah. help us to understand the parties involved in this latest clash. Now, the fighting is said now to be between Hamas and Israel. Now, Hamas, as we know, controls Gaza. But what does that mean in terms of how is the Palestinian government is positioning themselves? Because the Palestinian Authority is based in the West Bank. Now, maybe you could shed a light a little bit more about the actual structures of governance in the Palestinian territories in relation to this conflict. Uh, okay. It was happened in 2006, actually, after um, uh, the election in Palestine. In Palestine. Um, and at that time, in 2006, um, Hamas won the election, um, the legislative one, and then the executive one also won the election. And then, uh, in that situation, in 2006, um, most of the parties, I mean, uh, the external parties like United States, Un um, uh, European Union, um, um, do not accept the, um, the, 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 the result. Yeah. Um, and then, in that situation, starting to be um gaza area is such a um, the biggest prison yeah uh, like a siege uh, at the time and then um there is an uh, there's a problem in domestic uh, conflict uh, inside the palestine uh, in the, inside the palestine and then they agreed to make um, um their own authority i mean under the plo uh, fatah control the uh, west bank area and hamas control fully control to the uh, Gaza. And uh, and this is the, such a the background. Uh, why uh, in this situation, Hamas still exists in, in, um, and still strong in the um, um, Gaza Strip. All right, thank you, Pa Agung, for that comprehensive assessment. It makes us understand more about this complicated conflict that has been going on uh, for as long as we can remember. But now, if we can go back even further in history, to truly understand the roots of the conflict. Some say it started mm -hmm. in 1967. Others argue it actually began in 1947. 
but some scholars mm -hmm. also say it actually began centuries ago. Now, to your understanding, yes. what would be the historical trigger of this perpetual war we're seeing in the region? I think the first of all is the um, we have to, to find the context, whatever the, the date that we are um, agree, 1948, 1967, uh, yeah, um, whatever the, uh, the, the actual um, year, but above all, we have to understand the context of um, oppression, the context of colonialism that did by the Israelis. Uh, this is um, the things, the first things that we need to understand. Even this is, I I fully agree that this conflict is a multifaceted conflict. But above all, we have to talk about the the, the annexation of areas, the colonialism, the injustice that was um, happened to the Palestinian. So that's why um, when we are when we see uh, the oppression uh, right now in 2023, uh, somehow we see this this as a resistance. This is as the response that um, the injustice, the siege, the colonialism did by the Israel in more than yeah, 70 years. All right, Bagung, thank you so much. We've learned a lot so far from you, but we're going to ask you more questions, especially about the international response and also your opinions on long-term solutions for this conflict. But for now, we're going to take a little break. Please stay right here on TV RI World for our breaking news. And now I would like to continue my conversation with our guest, Bapak Agung Nurwijoyo, MSc, lecturer at Department of International Relations at FISIP University of Indonesia. Pak Agung, once again, thank you for staying with us on Breaking News on TVRI World. We would like to learn more about this ongoing conflict that has been not just a regional issue, but a global issue. Now, if you remember that there has been numerous efforts from the international community to facilitate dialogues between the conflicting parties uh, in the conflict between Palestine and Israel. And a lot of peace processes has also been established since maybe 1947 by the UN. We also remember the Camp David Accord, the Oslo Accord. What do you think has hampered all these efforts? As we see now, it seems to be futile, all these peace talks and negotiations. Okay, there's a lot of things that we have to consider here. Um, the most important one is those of the um, dialogue, yeah, uh, peace talk efforts. Um, sometimes they are not rich, they are not um, go to time to deeper to the, the, the main problems about this uh, situation. Uh, it is all about the colonialism, yeah. Um, and 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 this situation um, is very very not giving such a guarantee for the long term um, uh, solution, yeah. If the if only the peace treaty between parties is really something needed right now, yeah. Um, but in the in this very short term, I think also we need also to try to de-escalate the, the conflict is much more needed uh, right now. And back to the your 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 main question, and I think um, we see many efforts to the peace agreements. Even though uh, even the the, the last um, effort by the uh, United States with the Abraham Accord have not very full positive effect. Yeah, including um, efforts of normalization of the Arab states with the um, Israel. Sometimes it, it is not giving such a guarantee to the to the peace. So the problem is how to be much more yeah. Um, um, uh, being bring the justice to the, the parties between the Palestinian and also with the uh, um, Israeli and side by side. And the, also another thing, when we are talking about colonialism, we also talking about um, the freedom. This freedom is it means the independence. The independence things that this is the the obstacles, um, the dialogues uh, between the parties. Um, so trying to push to to make the palestine as the freedom countries as the independence countries this also see, uh, seems the one of the uh, solution it's because we, we believe two state solution is one of the uh, best uh, solution regarding to this um, dynamics uh, between palestine and um, israel 
All right, before we talk further about this two-state solution, Pa Agung, maybe you can also tell mm -hmm. us your opinion on how the United Nations has been in their role to mediate the conflict in Gaza and in whole of Palestinian territory. Do you think the UN mechanism is effective when it comes to the conflict between Palestine and Israel? Okay, I do believe that the order is something needed right now. Until now, yeah, uh, the order do, um, by the United uh, Nations. Yeah. But the problem is uh, that implementing UN resolutions it, itself still requires a mandate and that from what from the UN, yeah, UN Security Council and regarding to these issues UN Security Council there is a potential um, we say it fit to from the big countries such as the uh, United States as the traditional lines uh, with the uh, Israel so this is the, the, the problem yeah but but um, we, we do believe that effort from the United Nations is something mechanism that we need right now to encourage the de-escalate the conflict, to encourage the also another solution. For example, like uh, we've never tried to be to have a, such an international presence, yeah, uh, in in Palestinian, yeah, uh, in order to to de-escalate the, the conflict between the Israelis and the um, uh, Palestinian. Even even if, even this is something uh, hard to be uh, implemented, but this is something that we need to try to be um, able to be um, 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 implemented. I think, and also, yeah, the UN have a role in order to make the push the back push back the parties between Israel and um, uh, Palestine um, at at the table as the peace talks. Yeah, this is something also we need to to understand about these uh, issues. Okay, Pa Agung, now, the United Nations, along with superpowers in the world, including the U.S., have pushed forward the idea of the two-state solution for as long as we can remember as well. But there have been some fundamental arguments from both sides that have made the, this two-state solution quite impossible to realize. Maybe you can tell us more a little bit about this. What has been the biggest obstacles uh, in realizing this two-state solution uh, idea? Yes, the, the most important things is one of them is one of the uh, problems is about the um, um, how do I say the borders. Yeah, there is no um, consensus which borders that they have to to guarantee uh, to, to to be agree of. Yeah, uh, in 1967 or 1948, even though yes, um, the most prominent one is 1967. But when we are talking about borders, not only about borders, but also about the, the the rights of the refugee yeah the right of the refugee how will we talk about uh, these things those two th things uh, this uh, two main uh, obstacles when we are talking about the um, two-state solution but uh, above all um, it's all about the how we are trying to push um, the independence of the palestinian all right thank you pa Agung. Now talking about this latest clash, the escalation of tension in the region due to the latest attack made by Hamas in Saturday. How do you think of the international community's response to the conflict? I mean, maybe we can say we are seeing the same as usual. The U.S. has explicitly mentioned their support of Israel and some other countries are, of course, uh, behind Palestine in their effort to regain independence. But do you see anything yes. different between the usual community's uh, response to the conflict in Israel and Palestine? I think um, the world is divided. Yeah, uh, the first one, the first group is they're trying to yes support Israel as a victim and blame um, Hamas, and the others trying to understand that Hamas operation as the response to Israel's um, unended um, violence to the Palestinian. Um, here, I think. Um, we see the international community's view are so diverse, yeah. But uniquely, I think they have similar tone. The desire that conflict or this this war, I said like that, uh, does not continue to escalate, and each party need to restrain, yeah. Um, and something that we need to take into note that we cannot see this war or conflict as a business as usual because this has been happened many times, yeah. 1948, 1967, 1973. We know uh, in 1989, uh, uh, 
uh, we have Intifada, yeah, uh, also in 2000, and also some of the um, war in Gaza in 2008, 2009, and so on and so forth. Conflict is conflict or war is human disaster, and every single life is something precious. That this is something that we need to um, remember. Uh, that um, the international community has the um, um, responsibility to de-escalate this situation in Gaza because, as we know, this escalation is much more um, pricing. Uh, yesterday, we heard that Israel Defense Minister yeah, has ordered complete siege on Gaza. No power, no food, and no fuel. And we can predict, I think, this impact. Resistance. So war is going to be happen in a very quiet long time. Is it possible? So that's why we need, uh, there is, um, um, we need the effort from the international community in order to de-escalate the conflict. Okay, Pak Agung, one last question before we let you go. Unlike confrontations in previous decades, which was followed by a pattern of destruction and negotiated ceasefires, people are saying that Israel's war with Hamas this time is completely unpredictable. What are your views on that? And how do you think we can reach uh, a long-term solution to finally end this conflict in the Gaza Strip? Yes, uh, it's very logic that when people say that um, this is a little bit unpredictable. Yes, um, actually I saw this, this uh, operation by, by Hamas is quite same like what Hamas, uh, what the Palestinian or the Arabs uh, did in Yom Kippur War in 1973, yeah, if not mistaken. Then at that time, uh, in 1973, the Arab state is attacked the Israelis during his own holiday. Yeah, um, so it's quite same uh, in the last in the last Saturday um, during the, the the holy day of the um, uh, Jewish community. And Hamas um, send uh, rockets, um, and it's quite uh, same. And it's much more. This is different operation due to the strategy uh, held by the Hamas is quite different. Uh, uh, if we compare with the um, previous uh, operation held by the Hamas, uh, one of them is the uh, Hamas not only attack using rockets but also uh, giving a raid from the sea also um, to break the borders. Yeah. So this is something much more uh, different uh, if we compare with the, the last um, operation. So um, in order to push the, uh, to stop the war and yeah, each can, each um, um, uh, actors, yeah, Hamas and also the uh, Israeli, Need to avoid a greater human disaster, yeah, because the possibility is real, the problem is real. So, restraint and international community need to be much more included in order to de escalate the conflict, not only this um, international community, also maybe the international organizations and also the uh, non, -organ non governmental organization. They have their own um, um, role in order to uh, build peace in the Middle East, especially in Palestine and um, Israel. All right, Pa Agung, thank you so much for your valuable insights. We learned a lot from you about this latest conflict. Pa Agung Nuroi Joyo, MSc, lecturer at Department of International Relations, FISIP, Universitas Indonesia. Thank you for your time and insights. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed having you on Breaking News TV Area World. Thank you, Pa. Thank you.